My name is Katherine Harris, and I'm the Library Services Director at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. Today I have a guest. Would you please tell our audience your name and what your current position is? I am Edna Green Medford, and I am an Associate Professor of History at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. You received your doctorate from the University of Maryland, and your dissertation focused on slavery in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Have you always had an interest in African American history? I think I have. I grew up in an area where there were plantations, you know, throughout the county, and I always wondered where I fit into that whole history. So it's not surprising that I would become a historian. I, I don't think there was anything else I could have become. So you kind of came by it honestly and naturally, so, Absolutely. so to speak. Absolutely. Kind of was in your blood. It really was. <laughs> Uh, being here in the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, and um, I know of your involvement in this project, mm -hmm. have you always had an interest in Mr. Lincoln as well? Actually, uh, my interest in our 16th president came rather late. You know, I always hear stories of people who uh, knew about Lincoln during their childhood, started collecting Lincoln memorabilia during their childhood. I don't even recall a single time in my childhood that we talked about Lincoln at home. Hmm. Certainly in school, you know, on February 12th, we would have talked about sure. him. And always in the context that he freed the slaves right. uh, without any other context at all. <laughs> and so my interest really uh, started, I think, in graduate school, more than anything else, he, at the University of Illinois, uh, Champaign-Urbana. And uh, I think it intensified um, as I was um, actually, uh, when I was a younger professor <laughs> uh, at Howard, um, especially when C-SPAN decided to um, film the reenactment of the Lincoln-Douglas debates. I and see. I got involved in that. And, and so that kind of got, mm -hmm. you, got you going got me on, on the way. Yeah, absolutely. Do you consider yourself an African-American history scholar or a Lincoln scholar or both? Mm -hmm. And why? I think of myself as a scholar of American history with Certainly. an emphasis in African American history mm -hmm. and an interest in Lincoln. I think <laughs> okay. that would be the way. I am not a Lincoln scholar in the sense that I've spent my entire career studying right. Lincoln like many people have, but I've found that as I try to understand African American history, I have to understand Lincoln. I would say that I could understand Absolutely. that as well because Mr. Lincoln played a part in the history of African Americans in our country, Indeed just as did. African Americans played a part in the history of this nation. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. as a child, um, you said you really did not have any early memories of talking about Mr. Lincoln at, in, in your family, except for perhaps. Might that have been during Negro History Week, by chance? <laughs> That's exactly when it was. <laughs> you bet. Uh, and it was a week when Absolutely. I was growing up, not an entire month. Um, so yes, it was at that time that we sort of dusted off the heroes of the country that related in any way to African Americans. Right. So that was when we talked about George Washington Carver sure. and Frederick Douglass and uh, Booker T. Washington Absolutely. as well. But there was never any depth to it. I understand. That's kind of like my own growing up during Negro History Week, <laughs> when Lincoln freed the slaves, period. End yes, of discussion. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, but what, what really prompted your serious interest in, in Mr. Lincoln was, as, as you have already described to us, though. Mm -hmm. So you have written um, and spoken quite extensively about Mr. Lincoln, the Civil War, and emancipations. Mm -hmm. Uh, what forces do you think were at play that caused Mr. Lincoln to issue the proclamation? Well, the country was in the middle of a war, a war that the Union was not winning. <laughs> and I think that Lincoln realized that uh, everything should be on the table. Whatever mm -hmm. was necessary to preserve the Union, he was willing to try. And he understood what a powerful force the enslaved population was for the Confederacy. They were doing everything. They were continuing to labor in the fields. They were throwing up breastworks for the Confederacy. They were working as non-military labor, well, non-combatant military right. laborers. And so he understood uh, what a powerful advantage that was to the Confederacy. 
and he understood that if he found a way to separate slaveholders from that population, then it might be possible for the Union to win the war. And of course, there are other reasons as well, the diplomatic reasons. He's trying to get, uh, keep Europe out of the war on the side of the Confederacy, and mm -hmm. he understands that if he elevates the war to one for preservation, not just for preservation of the Union, but for freedom as well, then these hmm. European nations would mm -hmm. not come in on the side of the Confederacy, even though their governments might have been willing to do so. The people were not, because I the see. people were wedded to a free labor system. I've been involved with the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum since its inception, and so were you. <laughs> and yes. I'm sure uh, most of the folks who are listening to that won't realize that. But um, would you just explain how you became involved Mm -hmm. with this project and um, just tell us a little well, bit about Well, I, I tell you, several years ago, I was one of the presenters at the annual Lincoln Colloquium here mm -hmm. in Springfield. And so I became acquainted with some of the people who were involved in the, the early development of the library and museum. And I was asked to participate on the first panel. There were two panels of scholars involved in the planning. I was asked to participate on the first panel, and what we did was to determine some of the themes mm -hmm. that uh, were relevant to Lincoln. Right. And so I'm very proud of what we did. I think we worked very hard, and I think we have both panels and all the other people involved, especially you and the people who are here <laughs> who had to um, oversee this. I think a marvelous job was done. And I, I think what, if, if you will recall, what we had in mind was making Lincoln uh, relevant mm -hmm. to all people and accessible to all people. And I think this library and museum does that. Does that. The, the slave auction, which is where we're yes. sitting, I know you had very strong feelings and projected yourself very much into this. Um, and as we sit here, the, the slave auction does evoke a great deal of emotion. I have seen people weep in this room. Mm. And I would imagine, was that the kind of effect you were trying to achieve with this particular display? I was hoping. Good. I was certainly hoping. It is easy to look at someone scarred back and try mm -hmm. to understand the horrors of slavery. It's easy to talk about the exploitation of someone's labor. But when you talk about separating a family, uh, taking children from their mother, taking a husband from his wife, that's the real harm that's mm -hmm. done to African Americans in right. slavery. I don't think of any. I don't think there's any other way that we could actually convey how horrific slavery was, mm -hmm. except in that instance with this exhibit, with the family being separated. And even though I have seen this um, exhibit numerous times, it never fails to touch a chord in me. Mm -hmm. And when we walked in today, um, I noticed your reaction. And, and I know this is not the first time you've seen exactly. it, it, seen it either. So I, I would say that this is one of the more powerful tableaus, displays mm -hmm. in the museum. Um, right now, uh, we are into the Bicentennial of Mr. Lincoln, right here in Springfield, and the Bicentennial is receiving attention not only here in Springfield, but certainly all across the country. What do you see as Mr. Lincoln's most enduring legacy uh, to us in the 21st century?